here's a fun little sketch that we're going to do to start off with. This is a very interesting composition. We've got a, a lot of this light here down the front for the uh, photograph. I really like this one. So I'm going to start just popping in the base of all these mountains, generally where they sit. Um, I say they're just about here, almost a third of the way down the page from the top. So I'm just going to pop that in like that. Um, you've kind of got a section that comes in and then drops down here like this. It finishes around midway here of the page. Then we've got um, all these kind of mountains that just sort of pop up like this and um, you know, some of these warmer colored ones like this as well. And um, essentially they just go all the way up and these are just uh, trees and things here. So I'll just uh, indicate a bits and pieces like that. Uh, here at the base, we've got some smaller trees. So I'm just, you know, I'm just indicating them in with these round sort of sections like that. And um, it's almost like there's a bit of structure here as, as well. So there's uh, people, maybe it's a bit of farmland. So I'm just trying to um, indicate that these trees are kind of lining this area here. And there's a bit of a, a sort of clearing like that. And the trees all kind of go up to the mountains. Um, you've sort of got a section here that just runs all the way down the page there. We've got maybe a little shrub or bush here, another something here. There we've got a big tree that sort of comes in there and it's got a trunk like that. Like there, we've got one maybe around the back here that we can just get in there. Um, and it sort of extends down. I've got to think about the, the light source as well. I'm thinking I might just have the light source running to the left hand side just to keep it simple. Some of these, some of these um, bits and pieces. some shrubs or something down here. I could get another tree that's sort of coming in around this side like that. Creating a bit of a shadow again to that left section. And really here down the front, we've just got big sort of big clumps and large uh, shrubs and things that are just coming in. So. This one takes a little bit more planning in terms of the drawing, but that's just so that I'm not kind of guessing and doing it all later. But, um, you know, I have done both ways as well. I find this way is just a little bit, a little bit easier. Oops, I don't want a line too obvious like that. We can more so just get trees to line this section to indicate um, clearing or something like that. Same here, there's maybe a, looks like there's a fence of, of some sort and there's some trees in here. So um, always a good thing to indicate like this. You know, I can even make it look a bit more obvious than it actually is coming out like that. Um, so got this enormous tree here and uh, another tree sort of coming into this side there another tree here sort of overlapping there bits and pieces here um, but this tree here is quite a obvious feature and it's coming in and just um, getting in the way of everything and and I'm going to change it as well just to get a bit more of that branch coming in uh, to the painting here. So um, let's just move some of these branches that come up like that. There. More kind of um, stylized and exaggerated, I suppose. Okay. 
got this section here and runs all the way up the entire page and then we've got a sort of split area and some of it goes off there we've got more of it just going out of the painting like that um, let's just you know again just exaggerate these bits and pieces just fork off in areas like that and um, this I'm just and again exaggerating it that it just comes down through this area of the mountains here where we've got kind of an open space um, a lot of it just does branch off anyway um, and that's the beauty of a painting you don't have to do it uh, as the reference picture in fact a lot of the time you have to change it the you really get a reference that just speaks to you straight away and, and is ready to to paint you often just got to change things up so that it looks more um, interesting for a painting because remember in a painting you're kind of excluding bits and pieces so you also have to exaggerate other areas too in order to make up for that um, sometimes that lack of detail when you're changing things or taking bits and pieces out so um, I'm gonna pop another branch on here this is quite a bit this tree and um, we'll see how we go we'll see how we go I feel sometimes I go overboard but we'll, we'll look at it later and we'll decide whether it works or not um, large tree here coming through there like that a lot of this is just sort of kind of clearing or uh, who knows I guess just a kind of clearing I suppose creek Maybe running through here. Um, hard to tell. Okay. Great. So let's go ahead and get started. And I'm going to begin with a small mop brush and pop in a bit of yellow firstly, just for these mountains and things in the background. Let me just try to get this more, a bit more of that yellow running through there. Okay. That has turned out slightly greenish because I've accidentally got some of that uh, last wash onto it but um, we'll make do I mean, at this point all we're doing is just getting in some basic colors okay and um, down over on this side I'm gonna put in a bit of muted green and a bit of just a bit lighter this sort of green For this sort of mountain that's coming in here. Okay, there we go. It sort of comes out and um, pops out to the section there and then finishes off here, like that. A bit more color, especially the base, and some darkness at the base, like that. And I'm going to start also popping a bit in here. Just help that to melt in a little. There. Okay, we can have like maybe some bits of brown sections just kind of coming up through here as well. Just uh, I don't know how to describe it, but bits of the rock and uh, kind of dry brush areas on to indicate the texture of this area. Okay, really simple, nothing crazy there. And as we move down the mountain, here I am just popping in more, a little bit more darkness here. I'm just going to wet this area a bit, give it a bit more water through that section. That.
Great. This area of the sky I'm going to get in with some cerulean blue. So just clean off the brush quite significantly. And I'm going to go some light cerulean blue here. And I really mean it when I say light. Touch it onto some areas of the mountain, let it um, blend in. That. There we go. Get most of it in there, and then we can kind of uh, touch onto some areas and let it mix as well, like that. Great. Um, so I'm happy with how that looks. I'm not going to sort of play around too much with the sky. I mean, there's other things you can do. You can sort of add in a little bit of a cloud or something, very light indication like that, but I wouldn't do anything more really. And I'm going to start working my way down the page and we've got more of this sort of really light green area and I'm going to mix up a bit of Hansa yellow with a bit of the sap green I've got here and I'm just going to get in a nice light wash running through this area of the painting and, and getting it to mix as well with the some areas of the mountain so um, not all not all the areas you can leave some some areas of white here in the paper but you see some interesting sort of effects where it it almost blooms um, and goes upwards in there. And you can even, for example, just um, flick a bit of this paint on like that. Oops, some of it's gone into the sky. Like that just to get some interesting effects in there like that. Okay. And it's almost uh, starting to look like little trees or areas um, like that. So it's just a, just a little trick like that. Get it all blending together nicely. I think that's, a, that's always a challenge. Um, so now moving downwards and notice I'm going over a lot of this sort of, a lot of these trees and things here as well. And th there's some areas where I'm leaving a fair bit of the paper on there. Um, and another thing I can do is we can leave on a tiny bit of the white as well to indicate uh, some rows of uh, yeah, just tiny bit of white there, for example, and just coming up here, for example, we can get just a little section indication of a of that um, perspective line like that. Um, then we've got another one here this more green and more yellow it's starting to get a bit darker as I paint this section like that there and um, this sort of comes up meets in this point and that's all just becomes uh, green really all through here much at all. Um, maybe a bit early but we can pop in some of this darker green in the foreground and I, I want to do it now so that I can get some bits of uh, wet onto wet effects happening here. Okay, a little bit of just a more red, red sort of in this area, warm it a bit, like that, there, more green in here, like that, really really loose sort of uh, shapes that I'm popping in here, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary to be honest, um, and we can even drop in parts of the larger trees 
um, like this to test it out already. Like this. And um, just going in, because this is, you know, it's at the end of the day, this is how you blend things and make it look more organic. So I've got more of this paint. I'm just dropping in here, just a bit of darker paint. And sort of just meant to indicate another layer in front there. But we've got all these um, bits of area here, which I need to get in. Soften some of those edges too, just to keep that wash fluid and mixing through that area of the seam, like that. A bit more green in here as well. I'm forgetting that. There we go. And through this section as well, I'm going to start putting a bit of brown, a tiny bit of brown, and maybe some. We call just a bit of uh, neutral tint in here as well with the brown. We've got some trees and larger shrubs and things here that are starting to get in the way, uh, not get in the way, but you know, go into the scene like that. And um, that's what I'm trying to do here with a bit of this, this larger brush. You can swap over to a smaller round brush. So this is a number eight round brush. And, um, you know, continue to do some of this stuff. Essentially, um, that's much too dark, but I think when it dries off, it should be okay. I'll pick up a bit more of that other bits of paint, draw, you know, adding some more darkness on the left-hand side of some of these trees. Because I do want um, to get in, you know, a fair bit of this wet onto wet if possible, like that. Uh, it's just so much easier to paint wet onto wet and let it do its thing. You know, that could be a tree. That could be another tree here. Um, what else do we have? We've got all these bits and pieces running through like that um, sections there and um, you know again we've got this sort of area here which implies that there is a kind of separation or something like that so just playing that to my advantage there and you know here especially we've got uh, this section which We can get some of these shrubs and things running through the background and noticing very subtly that there is this line coming across like that, uh, running down here. Uh, this could be a little fence or something here. Little bits of detail. It may or may not be anything there, but um, I'm just wanting to get this to melt in better. Even this side here, I just probably have to dull this down, soften it, I mean. There. Too dark. Like that. Okay. A bit more darkness on the edge. Tried a bit funny. Okay, um, you know, we've got some sections out the back that we might also want to just darken down slightly in some areas, like this. Um, some mountains up in here, and just using that same brush to drop in details in here. applying things in there essentially um, there's a lot of detail up in these mountains and um, 
I don't want to spend all day trying to pop them all in. You know, I can even just soften that down. I feel like it's gotten a bit out of hand. Um, remember, we're only just trying to imply what's in there. I don't want to spend all day trying to actually paint all these little trees. It's, it's pointless to do such a thing. It loses its the inherent sort of beauty of watercolors when you do that, in my opinion anyway. So, um, fantastic. And I want to have a few little trees here. So notice how some of these are getting to be kind of, um, kind of just dry brush strokes because part of the paper's dry. Just leave that and, and um, let it do its thing. A bit more here. This is going up into the, the mountain here as well. You know, some of them I'm just doing a bit darker. So, like that. And, uh, anytime I'm noticing it's that you've got a bit that sticks out too much, I'm just going to essentially just quickly kill it off. Um, I might pick up the rigger and some of this brown paint, just a little bit of it, so that I can indicate some areas here on the mountain that just are going up. Uh, little, maybe some cracks and things in there, but uh, using the side of it like that. Use the finger every now and then just to uh, dull down an area if I feel like I've gone too much or just overdone it like that to soften down the section. Okay, um, I'm going to do the same here for this side of the mountain. Just wet it a little bit, pick up the round brush, a bit of green paint and um, just going to imply some smaller trees here. There we go, just doing its thing like that. There. I've actually got a, quite a dark tree here. There. Section there. So a darker tree here as well, like that. There. A little brush, few little brush strokes coming off like that off the top of this mountain to imply some softness like that. Okay, looking good. Um, now the next thing I'm going to do, essentially, looking I was going to get this to just I was going to wait around a little bit before I put in the shadows, um, but we're gonna. I think I'll just get it get it through now. Um, I'm thinking how should I get these shadows on and I'm thinking if we have them uh, just coming off on an angle here to the left like that they'll kind of go in the opposite direction of these lines and it will hopefully look look interesting so let's go ahead and add those in and for the shadow color I'm mixing up a little bit of a cooler color a little bit of a cooler purple color ultramarine plus a little bit of a, a red I think works quite well and let's uh, let's give it a try maybe for this one maybe here first so we've got like kind of the trunk of the tree and we'll start maybe getting in a little bit of the outer edge of it like that let's have a look 
Yeah, so just a bit of a trunk like that, and here as well, there, and um, the water that's down is just too, just a little bit too dark. I'm going to bring that shadow coming across like that. Here, same thing for this tree. Here, I'm hoping some of this just to blend in um, to the top section as well. Like that. Like that. Just tiny little sort of shadows coming off the edges. And if you feel like it's too sharp, you know, again, just spray down, spray it down a little and continue on. There. Another tree or something here. That. Okay. I get some of these tree trunks to just uh, melt in a bit more like that to be join on with the shadow. Kind of just almost like a, a little bit more detail so that it uh, makes it look less abstract. Especially for these ones that are closer to the front, um, I f definitely feel you need to pay more attention to how they um, look. Obviously, so there's more detail near the front and uh, more noticeable. So um, I do find it, it makes more of a difference to put the details in more obviously at the front for some of these trees. This could be two actually, two trees there, like that. ones in the back just uh, barely see what's going on so we won't have to worry about them as much. Alright, um, I'm going to wait for this to sort of dry off. Uh, this section is looking alright, I'm going to go in and just get in a few branch shapes some neutral tint and some brown so just popping in some darker color you know, a bit of branch or something like that and um, this sort of larger branch a couple of branches going up there and this is where we have to pay more attention to um, the details of these these brush strokes um, because it's so close to the front I add more detail so that it uh, there we go bits and pieces like that um, here's some little 
few little dry brush strokes there on the front. There we go, just indicating some small details and shrubs and that kind of thing. And that's another one. I think a shrub there and that. Some different uh, brush strokes essentially. That's all I'm doing. And we come to this section, um, I'm going to have to dry off the paper first. Okay, so time to drop in this tree. And for that I'm going to be using a mixture of brown, a bit of burnt sienna, and some neutral tint, maybe a bit of, a bit of blue as well. Indigo would be, would be nice, some indigo. Um, but it's actually just a darker colour. So starting off here at the bottom, just a quick brush stroke like that. And um, I think I'll just wipe off a little section there, like that. And maybe get a bit in, sort of like another tree or something in here as well. Bits and pieces that I'll just smudge and move around. Then I'm just going to start getting the branches in. So, kind of in the least amount of effort that I can. I'm going to try to hold the brush near the end as well. This is going to help. Uh, there's some details like that. Mainly the big limbs, we're going to need to use this larger kind of round brush here. And when I start getting into small details, I'm going to pick out my rigger and start playing around with, start playing around with the details of that. And, okay, great. Yeah, this one kind of goes up. This one goes up as well there. Another bit of the branch sort of sticking out like that. And, um, Pick up a little smaller round brush and um, start with the little details like that. Okay. Rigger to finish it off. Branches coming through the painting. That. some these little indications of fences and things uh, I find that's just going to help to draw out this kind of path a bit more running through there there's even some bits and pieces here at the back that uh, I'm gonna just put in not really there in some areas but um, it does help to imply Little details.
I'll call that one finished. If you like this video, check out the playlist on the right. I release new tutorials and art supply reviews each week to help you progress faster in your watercolour journey.